The creator Devin Super Jagos pulls starters. Cowboys gonna win. Remember, I said, of course you gotta play your starters. What? What is this? What is this? What do you mean, don't play yourself? Of course you play your starters. You have a chance to win the division. What the fuck you talking about? The fuck you talking about? You wanna have a little tea party? It's football, man. You play fucking football. The fuck you talking about? Here we go. You sit people when you have a division on the line. No, you don't sit people. Private member, thirteen months. Now Washington will win and this player will lose. I hope not. I hope we don't lose. Lewis Davis Super Chat. He goes, this is one of you guys that wanted us to play. You fucking play your starters when the division's on the line, moron. Davis Super Chat. But that's such stupid shit. God. You guys want to play tea, tea time? Tea time with the Eagles? Let's play tea time with the Eagles. The division's on the line. Of course you play your starters. You don't sit them. Shit, man. What the fuck is going on, Washington? You don't sit your starters when you have the division chance to win. What kind of shit is that? What do we play? Let's tea time with the Eagles. Hey, let's have a little tea. Oh, yeah. Hey, Giants, how you doing? We sit on starters, even though we could win the division. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. It is hump day and it, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe how quickly time is flying by. Um, before you know it, it's going to be the NFL winter. We have the playoffs this weekend. We got two games on um I'm sorry, three games on, no, two games on Saturday, three games on Sunday, and then Monday night. And you know, I am ecstatic about this because, you know, we've gone through the last two years of being in the playoffs. And one thing I've said about our offense is even though we were scoring a lot of points and all that, I didn't know what our identity was. I didn't know what our bread and butter was. Because, see, when you look at all the great teams, you know, you know with, with Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith, you know when the game's on the line, you're going to run the ball with Emmett Smith. That you're going to rely on that great offensive line to open up some holes and just run out the clock. So you knew that it was Michael Irvin <clears throat> that was going to get the ball. Our identity was the being the running game. You knew that. But I asked when Kellen Moore was here, what was our identity? What, what, what was our what was our bread and butter? What was the one thing that you knew when shit was on the line? This is what we're going to do because it works consistently, no matter what they are doing. And we were kind of the jack of all trades. Now, I'll, now let me let me explain something here on this. The term jack of all trades gets a bad rap. I'm a jack of all trades because when I build a house. You know, I do all the plumbing, the red brick house. I did all the plumbing in that house, all passed and inspected, all works. When I take a caca, it goes down the toilet, whoosh, 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 out to the streets. Okay, the electrical, you know, I've taught Michael, you know, electricity. He's actually going to school right now to be an electrician and things. And I have wired up probably about 15 houses and none of them have burned down. I can do the electrical. I can do the framing. I can do the drywall. I can do the cabinet maker. I am a jack of all trades, but I'm not going to say that I'm the best electrician out there. I'm not going to say that I'm the best plumber out there because guys that only do plumbing, that one thing, they know more tricks and know more about it than I do. And that's what we were as an offense with Kellen Moore. We were a jack of all trades 
and a master of none. Now, the whole saying on that is a jack of all trades and a master of none is better than just a master of one. Because when you have a problem at your house, you know, you, you got to remodel your bathroom. Well, you got to go ahead and get a crew in to demo it. Then you got to get the plumber in. Then you got to get the carpenters. If you're going to move some walls, then you got to get the drywall guys. And then you got to get the painters. And then the plumbers got to come back to hook up the fixtures. So you end up having to get all these different people. If you have a person like me, I'm a jack of all trades. I can rip the shit out. I can put the toilets in. I can put the tile down. I can hang the drywall. I can paint it. I can put up the fixtures. I can do it all. So that's where it's actually better having a, a jack of all trades. It's that the football. In football, I did not know what our identity was. We had some things we did really good. We did 12 personnel. Great. Great last year. Surprisingly, with two rookies at tight ends. We were pretty good at running the football because we had the two-headed monster and Zeke and Tony Pollard. You know, CeeDee Lamb was pretty good. But you don't know, you didn't look at one of these things and say, that was the greatest thing. That, that was the bread and butter thing that we have to do when shit's on the line. You just didn't. We didn't have an identity. And the thing that happens to us in the playoffs, and I will say during the Jason Garrett error, because it was an error, and I will say during Kellen Moore, when we got to playoffs, it seemed like, I don't know if the sphincter must have, because some people just don't handle pressure. Some people thrive on pressure. It seemed like the sphincter muscle would tighten up. The things that we would do in the playoffs, we didn't do, I'm sorry, things we did in the regular season, we didn't do in playoffs. The 12 personnel. The moving the pocket, because Dak Prescott is great on the move, one of the best quarterbacks outside of the pocket in football. We wouldn't move the pocket. We wouldn't do 12 personnel. We didn't do hurry-up offense. All of the things that the Cowboys did really well just kind of went out the window when it comes to playoffs. And that was true during the Jason Garrett era, and that was true during the Kellen Moore time. And we didn't really have an identity of saying, like the, the Washington Redskins, I forgot what it was called, but basically pulling the tackle and the guard from the backside and just running it with John Riggins. Boom. That, they would just, they could run that. They would tell you they're running it and they couldn't stop it. Well, I'm here to say that I think the Cowboys finally have an identity. I think they have finally found what their identity is as Dak Prescott to CeeDee Lamb. That that is the thing that they can't stop. That is the best quarterback wide receiver group right now. When you think that CeeDee Lamb is only 50 yards behind Tariq Hill, and when you think about those three games where he had less than 54 yards, where we weren't even using him before the offense evolved into using play action, using motion, using CD in the slot and things and moving people around. It was kind of like we were Stone Age and then we were modern offense. Stone Age offense, modern offense. And from that time since, CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott have been unstoppable. And it's a passing game. As much as Mike McCarthy said, I just want to run the football. We're not great at running the football. We're not bad. But we're not a great team at running the football. We are not going to be able to say, we're just going to line up, we're just going to run at you and win. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And having that quick strike capability, that four TDs against Washington, that 36 TDs on the season, that that offense is scoring and making the other teams play catch up. And if you do that, then you can t let the dogs loose. And that makes me feel so much better about where we are as a team that at least I know we have an identity. That no matter what, Dak the CD Lamb is what we can do that people can't stop. So here we go. Um, I'm going to be going down to the Redbrook House for a couple of days this Saturday. I have the memorial for my good friend Alex. Um, and of course we have playoffs Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we'll be here for all those and we'll have a game day party here on Sunday for the Cowboys versus the Packers. Um, 
the question yesterday on ESPN was about the Green Bay Packers, if they could upset the Dallas Cowboys, um, that the Cowboys should be an upset alert. I'm going through. I, I just humor me here. What the Packers did this season, okay? The Packers, week one, they, they beat the Bears. Week two, they lose 25-24 to the Falcons. Uh, week three, they end up beating the Saints 18-17. They lost to the Lions. They lost to the Raiders. They lost to the Broncos. They had a three-game lose streak. Oh, and they lost to the Vikings. They had that four-game lose streak. But then they came back around and beat the Rams in November. Lost to the Steelers. Uh, beat the Chargers that have fired a coach. Beat the Lions on November, on, on Thanksgiving. Beat the Chiefs, although the Chiefs were in that slump. Lost to the Giants, December. Lost to Tampa Bay. And as they go through and they talk about the stretch where they are great, um, they beat the Panthers 33-30. They beat the Vikings 33-10. And they beat the Bears 17-9. to So you can go through here and you can kind of say, yeah, they have scored a lot of points the last few games. But they scored 33 against the Vikings, which is a terrible defense. They scored 33 against the Panthers. They scored 17 against the Bears. Not exactly the best of defenses. And 22 against um, uh, the Giants and the um, 20, uh, 20 against the, pa I mean, the uh, Buccaneers. Not exactly the best of teams out there, but they're having you think that, oh my God, that, that they are just unstoppable, that they're just beating out. Now, don't get me wrong. They did beat the Lions, which is a really good team. They did beat the Kansas City Chiefs, which is a really good team too. But I don't know there's much to fear as it should, although it's playoffs. And we can say that the Green Bay Packers in 2010, as a wild card team, went on the road for four games winning the Super Bowl in Dallas. So let's listen in and see what they say. No, Orlowski comes on the show a lot and beats the drum. <laughs> I mean, come on. Let's be uh, the San Francisco 49ers, the best team in the NFC and have been pretty much all season. They got to be the day. And then finally, Dominique, if I said the Packers are going to upset their old coach, Mike McCarthy, mm -hmm. knock the Cowboys out on Sunday. Is that fact or fiction? Yeah, I think that's fiction. The Packers are have had a very successful season. And as I mentioned earlier, the draft that they've had the last couple years, like they got a lot of really talented young players outside of the quarterback. They built a really good team, and they're slightly probably ahead of schedule considering that they moved on from a Hall of Fame quarterback. Mm -hmm. so, so let's mm -hmm. talk about them a minute here, okay? Let, let's dive into this game because the Cowboys finally have everything set up for them. We, we, and we have discussed ad nauseum how they got the two seed in improbable fashion. So the road will go through Dallas until they have to go to San Francisco. To your point, the, the, the division winner can never repeat in the NFC oh. East, all of that stuff. Golly. But we all know that also styles make fights. Yes. The Packers have been playing really well. Their quarterback has been red hot. They're finally getting healthy on the offensive side of the ball. Defense hasn't been as good as we thought it should be. As styles make fights, how does this game shape up? Not great for the Cowboys, which Ooh. you wouldn't believe, right? When you think about this team, Jordan Love, to me, is the second-best quarterback in the in it, or, or is playing the second-hottest behind Dak Prescott right now. Yeah. So as you're Despite looking, the fact that, as I said earlier, he's actually playing the best, and you see the numbers okay. that – go ahead. Your, your numbers are skewed. But anyway, we'll get, we'll get to all this, right? Okay. But the, the Packers' offensive line, they are, they are dominant in play action. What hurts the Cowboys? Play action. What hurts the Cowboys? The run game. The, the defense for the Cowboys is going to have to be the difference maker this week against this team. So when you talk about styles, it's not just can they go score points. It's can they limit the Packers. And again, this is not a great match. This isn't the first matchup they would have wanted going into the playoffs for sure. Yeah, and I think the Packers are playing much better now than they were early in the season as an offense in particular. Sure. Aaron Jones and that rushing attack could potentially be a problem. But... 
the Packers still got to play defense. Yep. And they have they were better at it last week, but they haven't been good at defense no. all season or last season or the season before that. And you know who's really good? Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. yes. CeeDee Lamb. He's been, as oh, we yes. pointed out, he's probably playing the best. If it wasn't for Lamar Jackson, he'd be the MVP of the league right now. There's no reason to believe that he's not going to be able to do whatever he wants with him and Brandon Cook. Green Bay better line up under center every snap. Spin all the all the clock they can. Oh, Do not God. give the Cowboys offense oh, right. any chance to go attack. Yeah. No, no, this is just that. a game control thing yeah. because you let that press guy see that defense. They can give up a bunch and then they can't catch up. Jordan Love is good as as well, as well as he's played. They won't be able to match score for score. Well, but so, so let's live in that a minute here. Let, let's actually give the fans something to look for. That's going to be one of the glamour game. Look, Cowboys Packers. I mean, the oh. history there is unbelievable as we look forward to it on Sunday afternoon. Giving them stuff to watch for. You're telling me that you think, despite the fact that Jordan Love has been airing it out, you think that they need to have a, a, a run the ball, ball it, control it's not offensive just, it's, game It's play. not just run the ball. It's line up under center, right, which get, which makes the defense play a certain style that the Cowboys don't want to play in. Then hit play action passes, which does equate to Aaron Jones having to have a good day. But at the end of the day, it's the they're 20, Dallas is 20th in the league in, in play action. You line up in, in shotgun, they're the fourth best defense. It shows you they pin their ears back mm -hmm. and they played a completely different style. It's unfair. Jeff is right, but if you ask Jeff, he was late to. If you're late for work this morning, how do you solve that? You're going to say run the ball. Yeah. So the question that it's true, answer every it's question that you ask Jeff is going to be run the ball. But I do think that reducing the number of possessions is probably Thank a you. smart idea for the Packers. Going and how do you do that? Because even though Jordan Love's been good. You give that, that Cowboys defense a lot more opportunities to make game-changing plays, and they have so many players from De'Ron Bland all yeah. the way so down. So what do you do? So what do you do? Yeah, you're right. Okay, okay. Right, okay. Right, so just right, what right, I woke right, up with. Right. Like, what's your what's your wordle starter word every morning? Run the ball. <laughs> like, that's that's right. I mean, so, so look, uh, I, my concern with the Packers is the same as it's been all year. Young team. Yeah. Inconsistent team. You don't know what you're necessarily going to get one week to the next. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, right, but playoffs, right? Like the experience of having played in playoff games, can that not make a difference this time of year? I mean, is that the kind of thing? Would you be shocked if you if you were sitting here on next Monday or Tuesday saying, well, the Packers look like a team that were playing in the playoffs for the first time? No, I would not be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's because of the age. You're right. There you go. The youngest team in football, and they, they, they yeah, so I, I think it's the, nitpicking. I mean, I like what that. Well, they're, they're live. I mean, don't get me wrong. They could win the game. I'm just saying if they don't, that could be a reason why. Well, but sometimes can the reverse be true? Like, they, you want to talk about house money. No team yep. in this nope, postseason yep. is playing with house money more than the Packers are. Yes, that's right. Ahead and do it. Aaron Rodgers is home watching, and Jordan Love is in a playoff. No, sir. They are not on upset alert. Listen, I, this is one of the hottest teams in the NFL. Right okay, now. there we go. Big game last week show. All right, so I was sitting here working on something because I, I woke up in the middle of the night, about two thirty a.m. And being an old man, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night, you got to go pee, and that's exactly what I did. Got up in the middle of the night, went and peed, and um. Couldn't go back to sleep. I think I was awake until about 5 o'clock. And then I started having this theory in my head about something that I wanted to put together. And while I was watching that, I was actually getting the numbers, doing the research and things. I end up doing a lot of doubling things up as we go through. So the question is, is are the Green Bay Packers as good as they are making them out to be, or are they trying to build up the matchup? I feel like the Cowboys that this is a different team. I know people still don't believe in Mike McCarthy, including Jerry Jones, but I feel like we have something different for once. All right, good people. I'm going to get on out of here and head on down the road, get the truck packed up, and I'll see you at the Red Brick House. Our calls here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report.